How's it going everyone? Today we are doing a deep dive into the Zhiyun Crane 3S, their supposed flagship gimbal designed for larger rigs and cinema cameras. Spoilers, I don't think you should buy it. There's a lot I like about it, but there's also a lot of things that ruin the experience. I'll apologize now in case I get a bit ranty. First up, a quick overview of what you get in the box. I got the Pro Kit, which set me back about $2,000 redos. In my opinion, the gimbal is almost useless without the smart sling handle, and overly difficult to pick up without the extension piece. So that's why I ended up getting the Pro Kit, because it has both of those in the box. It also comes with two focus motors and the Transmount image transmission system, which we'll talk more about later. You also get a metric butt ton of cables for everything your heart desires, but don't get them mixed up, because they aren't all made equal. So this USB-C to USB-C cable doesn't work with the focus motors, only this one does. Bit annoying. They've also chosen to go with a Manfrotto 501 plate, which is my preferred style because my main tripod is 501, but it doesn't fit all 501 plates, which irks me. Most others I've tried are either too small and don't tighten down, or are too big and don't fit at all. Why can't it just be one standard size, and the only thing that changes is the length? On the front of their base plate are these two 12mm screw holes for their 12mm rods, which are super short and also stupid as hell. To start with, they're screw on, which means they can also unscrew, which can happen because the Xeon focus motors can only attach to these proprietary rods, which is in itself a pretty dick move from Xeon in my opinion. So if you've got a rig with 15mm rails, you'll need to either remove them or also use the 12mm ones as well and you can't just attach them to your current rig. And as the motors push against the lens, they're very likely to just unscrew themselves, unless you really crank them down with that hole through a tiny Allen key. But I just don't like it. Stupid. Now the extension handle is a must for the 3S, to even pick it up off a table, and it's got a good grip despite just being a cylinder, though I wouldn't really call it ergonomic or comfortable. The bottom has a 3 8 inch screw for the tripod base, and at the top you have this neat lock that stops it from spinning once it's screwed in. The last piece in the Pro Kit is the Smart Sling Handle, which is the only way to change certain settings because not everything can be changed in the app. But I'll talk about the app a little bit later. So the Smart Sling Handle has your OLED screen as well as some buttons and a dial for either quick changing between modes or going deeper into the individual axis settings. You also get a settings scroll wheel on the front and a rocker for controlling the zoom motor. That's all pretty standard apart from the fact that you have to pay extra for the screen that's been included on every other Xeon gimbal out of the box. Also, why does it just have a dial and not a joystick? So instead of being able to control the gimbal in underslung mode from the handle, you instead have to reach all the way down here awkwardly to the joystick on the base. The smart sling handle can be easily added or removed and it has a lock and a release button. With the lock made of plastic, it doesn't fill me with confidence and it feels like it's going to break on me every time. It hasn't yet, but I just feel like it might. Whatever settings you set when the handle is connected will stay active if you remove it. Here are all the parts you get in the Pro Kit, and here's the hard case you get to put them all in. Annoyingly, it doesn't fit all the pieces. It can't hold the extension arm, the PAL Plus battery pack, or either of the focus motors. So you need to either get another case, destroy this one, or just not use them. Doesn't feel very pro at all. Now the gimbal itself looks pretty cool. I'm a fan of the matte black with the gold accents, and each axis has a lock on it, which is a must for balancing a heavier rig. A problem with this style of lock though is that they're very easy to bump and accidentally lock. The clearance once you add the extension plate is also huge and should allow for basically any rig you have. But attaching that extension plate is a bit of a hassle and has resulted in more than a few people killing their gimbals. You see, to attach the extension plate, you first have to remove eight tiny screws and then gently pull on a ribbon cable to get enough slack and then place the extension plate in while holding onto the top bit and then screwing it all back together. 
and then feeding the ribbon cable back through and covering it with a foam piece. I think a much better solution would have been to have the plate connect via contact points, so you wouldn't be risking a ribbon cable. It'd also make it a much quicker and less fiddly job if you ever need to remove it again for smaller cameras. A quick rundown of the 3S externals. On the left side, it's got a big honk and focus wheel that unfortunately isn't removable. The DC in charging port for the Power Plus battery pack. The joystick is on the back under the battery compartment that takes three Xiyun branded 18650 batteries. The front has a trigger button that is horribly placed and very unnatural to press. Above that, you get a USB type A port that is only for charging other devices, but only at five volts, one amp. Then you get a USB type C port that is only for firmware updates. All the buttons that are all you get on the basic kit are located on the right side. And I think you're supposed to access them with your joystick thumb, but doing so does take most of your grip off the probably eight kilo gimbal, which feels incredibly sketchy. I can't stress enough how unergonomic the button and joystick locations are. If you've ever used a Ronin S, you know how easy it is to tap the trigger with your index finger and then move the joystick. Inversely, on the Crane 3S, the trigger is too high up, and if you move your hand to reach it, then you can no longer use the joystick and will most likely bump it. By the way, if your gimbal is being weird and not responding, it's most likely you flicked this function button by accident and now nothing works. I also wish it had more mounting points. The Crane 3 Lab had these two front rosettes, which would have been great for monitors and stuff, instead of being further back like on the Crane 3S and pushing the center of gravity towards you. Also, because your only real controls are on the smart sling handle, when using a ring or a two-handle setup, you want to leave that attached, which also means you'll have to hold the gimbal just slightly further away from yourself than is comfortable, meaning you're going to get tied a lot quicker. Now for the best bit about the Crane 3S. These motors are strong, like really strong. It can pretty easily run a C500, FX9, or a stupidly overbuilt Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. So let's do that. The motors are rated for 14.33 pounds or 6.5 kilos. So let's see how much we can make the BMP C66K weigh. All right, with uh, everything attached, it comes to about six kilograms. So can we balance it? Yes, but it isn't easy because the arms basically refuse to move at the best of times, let alone when they're super weighed down. So taking the weight off each arm as we try to balance it, we find that the roll axis hates its life and refuses to balance. This can happen with super heavy rigs that have a high center of gravity, but Zhuin doesn't consider this to be unbalanced. After contacting support myself and seeing plenty of others do the same, you're given the reply that this is fine as long as the gimbal returns to its level position, which is a bit of a cop out because you might be straining the motors in certain situations, but I'm not an engineer, so I've got no idea if it's a tolerance issue or what's going on. But as you can see, it's working. The stupid over the top unfeasible BMPCC rig is flying on the Crane 3S. It's heavy as hell and my arms will hurt after about two minutes, but you can do it. And if you do intend to do this, there are supports out there like gimbal rings, ready rigs, and steady cam vests that would all make this far easier. And you'll still be several times cheaper than if you were to buy a bigger competition gimbal. Okay, now that we have it running a payload, let's talk about the focus and zoom system you get with the Pro Kit. They're pretty small, just a little bit larger than the Nucleus N, and there's a max, which is for focus or zoom, and then there's a light, which is only for focus. Except I can't for the life of me get the max motor to be controlled by the focus wheel. In the menu, you can set the focus to be the max motor, but that changes nothing. Swapping which USB-C port it's connected to changes nothing. I'm not sure if this is a software issue or the way that they intended it, but it means you can't spin heavy cinema lenses with this system unless you want to use the little rocker that you only get on the smart sling handle. The light motor is strong enough to turn all the photography lenses I have, but it'll freeze up on anything bigger and just refuse to work. Zhiyun should definitely fix this. That said, when you're using a lens that it can turn, it's actually basically lag free and can spin quick enough for most things when you set it to max sensitivity. I've already whinged about the 12 millimeter rods and how they unscrew, so I won't go back into that. I hate them so much. I hate them. 
The Transmount Image Transmission System. You get this in the Pro Kit as well, and it lets you wirelessly transmit the HDMI signal from your camera to your phone or to the receiver that's sold separately. I just use it to my phone, which it actually was only able to do as of about two weeks ago. Before that, my Pixel 3 XL wasn't compatible with the app and was completely useless. I was pissed. Now I'm less pissed. I'm able to view the camera feed with very little latency. I'm pretty impressed by this because even some of Holyland's expensive ones, like the 400S Pro, still has pretty unusable lag in my opinion. This still isn't quite tight enough to accurately pull focus with, but it's enough to give a basically real-time view of what your operator is doing without staring over their shoulder. Jiun says, Under ideal lab conditions for phone monitoring, the minimum latency of the transmitter is approximately 60 milliseconds only. When using the monitor, the minimum latency of the whole system is approximately 150 milliseconds. Latency caused by camera, HDMI not included. So you're probably better off just using the phone. Also, if you connect your camera's control USB to it, you can adjust some of the settings such as ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. There's a few bugs with this, at least on the BMPC 6K, such as it getting stuck between f1.8 and f2.2 on the Sigma 18-35. to It registers 1.7 as zero and will just get stuck. And changing settings isn't fluid. Like if you swipe a bunch to go from ISO 400 to 3200, it won't do it in one go and will instead make you do it one step at a time. Which is a bit annoying, but not really a deal breaker. One nice thing is though, that the transmitter will function fine without the 3S. So you can just whack it on top of your camera and you can now monitor from your phone. Not a bad value out overall. Now let's talk about the app. It's easy to connect to the 3S and only takes a few seconds. If you have the camera control cable connected, you can start and stop recording, but that's all which is pretty disappointing. From the gimbal itself, you can change ISO, aperture, and shutter speed via the Smart Sling handle if you've got it, but nothing from the app, at least on Android, and I can't see any buttons that would allow it anyway. So if you've got it mounted on a crane or a car, you'll have to access the camera or the gimbal itself. There's no way to record the focus or zoom motor. There are wide and telephoto buttons, but they're grayed out and do nothing for me. That is, unless you have the transmitter and have that connected to the camera and to the gimbal. Then you get both camera start stop, parameter control, and gimbal control with the focus and zoom too. Also through the app within the transmitter page, you have access to Smart Track 2.0, that is basically the same as DJI's Active Track, except worse, and lets you draw a box around something on screen and then have the gimbal follow it. The signal is definitely choppier on my Pixel 3 XL than my wife's Galaxy S8, though admittedly my 3 XL isn't actually on the list of supported devices. Though, speaking of that list of supported devices, it's tiny and hasn't been updated since the 3S launched. Down the bottom in fine print, it says not everything's available on all devices, so I'm assuming things like parameter control without the transmitter is just an iPhone thing, which kinda sucks. In the options menu, you can calibrate the motor strength, but with far less customization than the DJI Ronin app. Here you only get a few levels of overall strength, if you want to dial in anything on a bi-axis basis, you'll need to use, you guessed it, the Smart Sling handle. And even then it's only strength. You don't get the different options like strength and stiffness like you get from DJI. Some of the main problems I've run into while using the Crane 3S are micro jitters and a kind of harmonic resonant shaking that was apparent when it was first released. And it took Xion months to fix it with a firmware update. I can still get the occasional shaking but usually only when the pan motor is 180 degrees and has to stay there, but that's kind of a weird scenario. I've already mentioned the app incompatibilities, which are ongoing and desperately need to be addressed. When I first got my 3S, the roll axis wasn't level and was causing all my footage to kind of be tilted to the side. I tried Googling everything I could think of, but I found no fix. Jiun support also wasn't much help. I was just about ready to return the whole thing when I stumbled across motor calibration in the app, which turns out allows you to change the level position of the tilt and roll axis. So that fixed that. If you go through the Crane 3S forums or Facebook groups, they're full of people complaining about basically every aspect of the 3S. Everything from DOAs to firmware issues to screw threads being stripped. All in all, it's a bit of a mess, but it has slowly been getting better. There's a lot of little annoyances and baffling design decisions that bug me every time I use it, 
and then there's just certain things that just straight up don't work. Maybe it will get better over time, but you really shouldn't be buying a product based on things that might never happen. Google. And it angers me that they advertise a lot of features that just straight up don't work. To sum up what I've spent the last 20 minutes yapping on about, if you have a big rig like the C500 or a very decked out Ursa or Black Magic Pocket Cinema camera, then this might actually be your only option before moving on to a bigger, more expensive system like the Ronin 2 or Movie Pro. And if you do end up getting the 3S, you should definitely get a ring, ready rig, or vest so that your arms don't fall off. But if you don't absolutely need the 6.5 kilogram payload, I don't think you should get it. The Zhuin Crane 3S feels like they got overexcited by how much weight they could get it to take and they rushed it to market half-baked. But so far, for me at least, it's working. For now. Though that RS2 does look pretty great. So what do you think about the Crane 3S? Are you going to get one? Do you already have one? Or have you already returned it? Let me know down below and maybe click some of those other fun looking buttons as well. Thanks for checking out the buyer's guide and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya!